Hallelujah. God is good. All right. So good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Even though, even though, even though, till about two o'clock in the morning, we heard explosions happening in our neighborhoods. Um, but that is the beautiful thing about the country that we live in. Amen. <laughs> we know how to celebrate. And, um, you know, in, in our neighborhood, our kids are at the age where they are scared, absolutely scared of fireworks. And so they were shivering and holding on to us as we were trying to put them to sleep until about, you know, 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning. So it was, it was awesome. It's good to see you this morning. Yeah, you guys are kind of awake, kind of okay. Um, you know, I, I, I heard this saying that really touched me once. Um, it said, the happiest people in the world are people that look for a way to give instead of looking for a way to take. The happiest people in the world are, are people that look for a way to give instead of always looking for a way to take. And I thought that's so true. You know, when it comes to giving, we experience so much joy and so much reward, not just in finances, but in every aspect of our life as we become givers. And, and it's our prayer and it's our mission to become people of generosity in every area of our life. As a church, as a family, to be people that practice generosity. It doesn't matter how much you have, if you have a lot or if you have a little, but to be generous in what you have. Amen. Turn to the person next to you and tell them, be generous. Be generous. And you know what? Generosity is, is not what we can take from you, but it's what you can have through it. You know, uh, it's a wrong mentality to think that we do this or people do this or people talk about this because they want to get more out of you. You know, uh, God is able to pay the bill. God is able to provide supernaturally. But he chose to involve you in that blessing. Come on, somebody. He chose to have you get a little bit of that in the process. He allowed you to invest in one of the greatest, most thriving companies that's better than Apple, is better than, uh, I don't even want to say, you know, Microsoft or anything like that, but it's better than Apple and it's thriving. This, his economy is booming. It's going through the roof. And he allowed you to, to be a part of that, to take shares in that kind of corporation. So that's a blessing to understand it in that perspective that you have a chance to be part of something that God is doing. And through your generosity, God is able to bless you. Amen? So, so you're, you're blessed through your giving. You access the promises of God. You access the shares of his corporation. And you get to enjoy that. So the more you give, the more you'll enjoy giving. And everybody that gives says amen because that's true. And so I just uh, want to encourage you to be generous and never to think or take that lightly. The time of offering, the time of tithes or the time of, you know, need or the time of volunteering. Just to practice generosity. Say, s s just make a decision in your own life. Say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to experience this. I'm going to experience generosity and, and the Lord says test me in this will I not open the heavens you know test me in this the Lord actually challenges us and to me that's just awesome you know to be able to experience that and some people have never experienced that that's why maybe they have a kind of a corrupt understanding of what giving is or what generosity is and so I want to challenge you to um, to be obedient and to be led by the Holy Spirit in your giving life in your uh, in your in your life of generosity because he will speak to you and he will direct you where to give how to give when to give and it's just awesome amen well I'm excited to um, start a new series today it's called renewed mind turn to neighbor and tell them, renewed mind renewed mind say it like you mean it renewed mind so we're going to talk about this subject for the next couple weeks renewed mind and we're going to go a little bit deeper in the scripture and learn just about our mind and um, the way it works and what the Bible says about our mind and what it means to walk in the renewed mind. So, you know, it's amazing because uh, they say that every, anywhere between 50 and 70,000 thoughts per day each person goes through. At least at the bare minimum, every 17 seconds you think a thought. At the bare minimum. Minimum. Can you imagine that? 
And I mean, I know that it doesn't apply to all the guys because guys just tend to go into this weird nothing box. And, and so, but to girls, it applies 50 to 70,000 thoughts per day. It's crazy to think that we think that much. But you know what's even more crazy? That we're not aware, so, so many times we are not aware of what we're thinking. So many times we just allow our mind to wander off. So many times, even sitting here, you could be listening to me and thinking about, you know, uh, Olive Garden after church and all the people you're going to meet. Your thoughts just wander off. And, 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 and sometimes you're not even aware that your own thoughts are robbing you of the moment that you're in. 50 to 70,000 thoughts per day. Did you also know that our brain is more active at night? Because it tends to connect with all the, because there's oxygen and blood flow and it connects with everything. And we process everything that we learned throughout the day at night. Our brain, if you will, it's kind of like, you know, you've been to like Safeway before. And they, they have night shift, but the night shift is when they stack all the stuff on the shelves. Well, that's kind of like your brain. During the night, night shift, you're organizing in your mind and stacking Everything that you've learned, everything that you've taken in throughout the day. We're not even going to go into how much stuff is stored in your brain. Because that's just, that's too much to handle. But it's bigger than all the computers and, uh, can do and, you know, the biggest hard drive on your phone can do. And all that stuff stays there. And, the, you know, the interesting thing is our thoughts affect our life more than we think. Our mind is the birth center to every result that we see in our life. Everything starts with a thought. It doesn't just appear. It doesn't just happen. Sin doesn't just happen. You don't just walk and trip and fall into sin. It, that's not how it works. It starts here. This is the war zone for the enemy. And this is also the birth center to every good thing or every bad thing that happens in our life. So I am... I just feel uh, led by the Holy Spirit to speak on this in this season for our church and for us as a church to walk in a renewed mind, to know who we are and to be aware of our thoughts. And we're going to talk a little bit about thoughts and then we're going to talk about how to overcome thoughts. And, and the, the thought that I want to bring today is the power of thinking thoughts. Because a lot of times we focus on fighting thoughts, you know, we fight thoughts, we fight negative thoughts, bad thoughts, bad images, whatever. Because we're exposed to a negative world, a dark world with so much sin, corruption, and all this stuff. And so we're always trying to stay holy and trying to kind of make it. And we're in a mentality of fighting thoughts. But what if I propose to you another way of overcoming, and that is the power of thinking thoughts. Replacing thoughts. And, 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 and what I'm going to share with you is really what, what I went through and how I experienced victory even in my thought life. And when you experience victory in your thought life, you really experience victory in your whole life. So, you know, the Bible says in Proverbs that as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. If I would rephrase that, you are what you think. Turn to neighbor next to him. You are what you think. So the real you is the thought you, is, is, is the one you that is in your, in your thinking life, in your thought process life. Because you know what? You can smile at me and you can put up this nice, beautiful face, but inside you can hate me. Or inside you can have anger or bitterness towards me. So what would be the real you in that situation? Your smile or your thoughts? Your thoughts, your anger, your frustration towards me or towards somebody who offended you or something that happened. So the thought you is the real you. And we have to learn first not to ignore that. And to catch yourself at your thought. Jesus always knew what they were thinking, right? He saw Pharisees and he knew what they were thinking. And he said, so, so they were corrupted not because of what they did. They looked good. They dressed good. They were in the right place. They were in the synagogue. They were doing the right thing. But their thoughts were corrupt. They had carnal thinking. They, they were trying to betray him. They were trying to kill him. They were trying to plot all this evil. So, you know, the Bible also says that they honored me with their words, but their heart was far from me. 
You know, we could, we could actually be doing the right thing, saying the right thing, being in church, doing the right thing, but being so far from God in our mind. You know, one of the things that God began to highlight in my life, to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your strength, and all of your mind. Can you imagine? You can love God with your mind. You ever thought about that? How do you love God with your mind? I mean, I understand heart. I understand strength. But how do you love God with your mind? I'm just going to throw that out there. We're going to do that next, 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 uh, next uh, Sunday. But, but think about this. And so the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. The Bible also says, let the Holy Spirit renew your thoughts and your attitudes. I think it's like a package deal, you know. If the Holy Spirit renews your thoughts, your attitudes are going to change. So he could have even ended by saying, let the Holy Spirit renew your thoughts. Because when your thoughts are renewed, your attitudes change. Your results change. Your desires change. Your actions change. And so I want to I show you this in Scripture. But before I do... In Romans 12, 1, it also says, you know, uh, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed, and we know this passage, do not be conformed, Romans 12, 1 and 2, to this world, but be transformed. Say transformed. Transformed by the renewing of your mind. You see, the, the real core of every issue is in your mind is in your thought life. So be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What is he saying? When we are renewed, we are transformed. And we are transformed, we can walk out that perfect will of God for our life. What does that mean? That when we are renewed in our mind and we become transformed through the renewing of our mind, we are completely changed. Our life changes. Our desires change. We are a new person. You know, repentance is really a new way of thinking. So many people come to give their life or to repeat a prayer, but their life doesn't change. Because they have not received a new way of thinking, they go back to their old ways. They go back to the things they used to do in the past. But repentance is receiving the mind of Christ, receiving a new way of thinking. And that's why it changes our life. Because we receive a new way of thinking. So he says, do not be conformed, but be transformed by the renewing that you may prove. What the perfect will the perfect, good, and acceptable will of God is. That is awesome. That we have an answer. That we, we know what needs to happen in our life. That we know how to go through this process. How to change. You know, the mind or the thoughts is like the core. So if you, if you really want to get rid of something, you know, if you're trying to get rid of weeds, you got to pull them out with the root. So the root is the thought. The root is what's the secret part of you, right? When nobody else sees it, it's underneath the ground. That's your thought. Let's open a James 1, or it's going to be on the screens for you. James 1, chapter 12 through 18. James 1, chapter 12 through 18. God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. After the, afterward, they will receive a crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Now, verse 13, he says, And remember, when you are being tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong, and he never tempts anyone else. Temptation comes from your own desires desires so guess where temptation comes from your own desires a lot of times we blame the devil we blame the person we blame anything and everything for our problem and our reason to continue to fall into the same trap or to continue to fall into the same ditch 
But he says, don't say you are tempted by God. And it doesn't say to say that you are tempted by the devil either. It says, your temptation comes from your own desires. Which entice us and drag us away. Isn't that interesting? And then it says, these desires give birth to sinful actions. And when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. It's very silent in this room. So don't be misled, my dear brothers and sisters. Whatever is good and perfect comes down to us from God our Father, who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts the shifting of a shadow. He chose to give birth to us by giving his true word, by giving us his true word. And we, out of all creation, became his prized possession. So in James, it's talking about a process. It's talking about something uh, that I begin to see in my own life because we're deceived to think or to excuse the condition that we're in. So thoughts, our thoughts, give birth to desires. Our thoughts, they give birth to desires. And the reason why I use the word birth and the reason why James uses the word birth is because there's a process. It doesn't take a second. It takes a process. Birth, there's a process. There's a, a process of time. It, you know, to give birth to a child, it takes nine months. There's a developing process. So I'm not saying that if you get one thought, that's it. You're ruined, it's over. No, you might get these thoughts. You might have the uh, enemy attacking you on the level of your thoughts. But when you allow them to stay and you allow them to build a nest on your head and in your brain, it will give birth to desires. You cannot run from that. You cannot change that. The only way to change that is to change your thoughts. So thoughts give birth to desires. And then James says, desires, they entice us and drag us away. But eventually, they give birth to sin. These desires, the wrong desires, they give birth to sin. And then sin always gives birth to results or actions, sorry. Our desires give birth to action. So thoughts give birth to desires. Desires give birth to action. Action give birth to results. So everything that we actually physically do, it produces some kind of result, right? Good result or bad result. It doesn't matter. We're talking about both right now. So our action is the visible part of us that produces negative or positive results. Thoughts give birth to desires. Desires give birth to action. Action gives birth to results. If you want to change your results, if you are in a place where you don't want to be where you are at right now and you want to change, the way you can change is not through, you know, begging God for more because God's already done everything that he can and he's given you every promise that he can in Christ Jesus. But really, it's to make a decision. And if you want to change results, you have to change your actions. But for you to change your actions, you have to change your desires. But for you to change your desires, you have to change your thoughts. So we have to go backwards and see how can we really change? How can we really be transformed? We cannot wait for everyone else around us to become perfect. Because guess what? That's never going to happen. We have to begin to watch our thoughts. So he's talking about this process here. Everything starts with a thought. Everything. You know, thoughts are like seeds. You, you, and uh, Galatians says, don't be misled. Galatians 6, 7. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature 
will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who le live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. So, so God cannot be mocked. What we sow is what we're going to harvest. You can't expect God to change the harvest if you are sowing something else. God has given you the ability to sow. God has given you the ability to take from what he has given you. And so a lot of people want the harvest to change. They want the results to change. They want their life to change. But they're not willing to change their thinking. We have just a little bit of time, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in further. But think about this. And I heard one pastor say this, that anxiety, worry, or stress is really the result of negative thinking. You know, there's people that always think of the worst thing that can happen all the time. They get in the car and they're like, oh, I can crash. Oh, all these cars. Oh, this. And so they're always trapped in fear. They're trapped in fear. They're always thinking of the worst possible outcome. It doesn't mean that, they're, that it's going to happen, but it's already trapping them in their mind. And anxiety, stress, depression is the result of what? Negative thinking about your life. It starts with a thought. People start to think that they're not pretty enough or something's wrong with them. And they allow that thought to, to, to give birth to things on the inside of them. You know, I've seen, I've seen so many young people in this generation, you know, because I travel a little bit. And, and, and it's, it's, it breaks my heart to see young people attempting suicide from the church in Christian families. And you're thinking, how is this possible? Like, how, how does it get there? How do we get there? When a 14, 15-year-old commits suicide, attempts to commit suicide, we're not talking about just thoughts. We're talking about actions. You know, I, I met a friend who had stripes all over his wrist, and I said, what happened? And he's like, well, I don't want to talk about it. And I realized that he was ashamed that he used to cut himself, and he get, can't get rid of the, the scars anymore. You know, it's a result of negative thinking. So, so think about this. It's not just the result of positive thinking. Every thought that you allow to stay ends up giving birth to something. So guess what? If you're thinking bad things, if you're thinking negative things, they're going to produce results too. So I want you to begin to do one thing, to begin to catch yourself at your thought, at the place of your thought. When you start thinking hate towards somebody or you start getting offended at somebody catch yourself right there and say no no I'm gonna bless them no I'm not gonna be offended at them I, I release them I forgive them and just just break that thought break the power of that thought don't allow it to develop root and to produce actions in your life so so that's why it's saying that whatever we sow we reap we can't mock the justice of God we can't take shortcuts all the time we received a new create. We are a new creation. We are, we have become new in Christ. We have been given everything through Him. Now we have to use it. We have to make choices. Hello. We are not robots. We make choices. We have to make decisions. We have to commit our life to follow Jesus. You know why a lot of uh, believers are offended? Because they want their life to change without their involvement. They want their life to change without them making any decision, making any choices, and God somehow supernaturally always changing their life while they are living to satisfy their own sinful nature. And so it's saying, hey, God cannot be mocked. The justice of God cannot be mocked. Whatever you sow, you're going to harvest. But God gave you seeds. God gave you promises. God gave you his Holy Spirit that you can be transformed. And live a different life. Ephesians 2, 3, just to give you, uh, give you uh, and close this thought. Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh. And look what it says. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. See that? 
and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. Where we once conducted ourselves by the lust of our flesh and of the mind. See, it's a really powerful thing that when you begin to, to, to choose to meditate on God, when you begin to set your mind upon him, he becomes more real. He really becomes bigger in your life. It's kind of like, it's kind of like flying up on a plane. You know, things on the earth become smaller and smaller and heaven becomes bigger and bigger. You know, you, you look at these mountains and you're like, whoa. And then you fly up on the plane and just look at them and you're like, oh, it's that small? Yeah. So in closing, because I don't want to leave you on this note, I want to propose to you a way that you can overcome. A way that you can be transformed and continue to be renewed in your mind. In Romans 8, 5, it clearly states, 8, 5 through 9, for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds, say set their minds. So those who live according to the flesh, what do they do? They set their minds, their mind, we're talking about mind, thoughts. They set their thoughts, they set their minds on the things of the flesh. Listen to me. If your thought life is consumed on the things of the flesh, if you're constantly thinking about fleshly things, if your mind is consumed uh, and, and awakened for the appetite of sin, and that's what consumes your life. See, those who live according to the flesh set their minds. That's how you determine. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. So there's a few things I want to outline in this passage. Those who live according to the spirit set their minds to the things of the spirit. Those who live according to the flesh set their minds. It's talking about a choice. You setting your mind on God. You setting your mind on the things of the Spirit. You can do that. You can do that. You can choose to set your mind on the things of the flesh. And you know what? Whatever catches your attention catches you. So that's why... People, some people always notice the negative things. You know, they always see the cup half empty instead of half full. They always see things in a negative light. They're always complaining. They're always nagging. Everybody's always not good enough around them. They are, they are setting their mind on the wrong thing. So he, he says set their mind, which tells me that I have a choice. I have an option to set my mind to the things of the flesh or to set my mind to the things of the spirit. But those who live according to the spirit, they set their mind uh, to the things of the flesh or to the things of the spirit. Why? Because it's impossible to live pleasing God, to live a life of your potential without your mind being set on the spirit. What is it saying here really? It's saying that you can never do what God called you to do or be who God called you to do to be unless you set your mind on the things of the Spirit. I'm talking real right now. I'm, I'm going deep right now on purpose. Guys, we can be transformed. We can be changed. The things that we see, we can see in a different light. We can have joy. 
we can have peace. The Bible says here, those who set their mind on the things of the Spirit, they have life and peace. You know how much people are willing to pay for peace? They are putting bulletproof doors on their, on the, uh, on their houses. They are putting bulletproof windows. They are getting security there just to buy peace. And still, they have no peace. But we, people that set their mind on the things of the Spirit, we walk in peace. And we have life. That is powerful. That is powerful. You don't have to live in depression. You don't have to be defeated by the enemy. And honestly, some of you, you need to stop. You just need to stop self-pitying yourself. You just need to stop. You just need to put away with that. You've been a victim your whole life. You have been victim-minded your whole life. And you've always just felt sorry for yourself. And you made everybody feel sorry for you. And that's what gave you like a painkiller. Just stop. Put, away, put that away. You can set your mind on the things of God. And God can become so real to you. And heaven can become so real to you. That your life will be completely transformed. So I want to give you just a key, just a key before you, we, we pray. I want you to begin to meditate on the Word of God every day. Just to take time and to meditate on His Word. To take time to think about what His Word says. We could read the Bible all the time but never really sit down with the Bible and meditate. Never really allow that to go deeper. Because you have the power to think thoughts. So guess what? If you occupy your mind thinking about God, thinking about his word, thinking about his promises, thinking about what is true, you're not going to have open windows and doors for all this other junk to come in. And the more you meditate on the Lord, the more you occupy your mind with the things of God, the less room the enemy will have to attack you. So you will actually, in the process of time, become stronger. And you won't battle the same thoughts you're battling right now. You know, some people, they've been trapped in their mind for so many years that they think their whole life is going to be like this. That every time they look at a girl, they're going to fight these thoughts. No. Or every time they, they go to that place, they're going to think about drinking. No. You don't have to be a slave to those thoughts. You can choose to think thoughts. And, you know, the power of thinking thoughts is one of the great keys in this passage. You can think thoughts. And when you think thoughts intentionally, on purpose, when you meditate on the Lord, it will produce a harvest in your life. A harvest of joy, a harvest of peace, a harvest of righteousness. And you will walk with your mind set on the Lord. And you will see the Lord. And you will have discernment in situations. You will not lose control of yourself. You will not lose your temper. You will have a character of Christ, the mind of Christ. And you will learn how to love the Lord with your mind. And so in Joshua 1 8, it says, Study this book of instruction continually meditate say meditate meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it only then say only then only then after i meditate on the word of god day and night only then will you prosper and succeed in all that you do wow wow if i choose to meditate on the word of god day and night if i set my mind to the things of the spirit and i begin to meditate in that and i begin to allow that to just absorb my life absorb my thought life only then only then 
I, we're coming back to the same beginning. That this is the birth center. That this is the real change. It starts with your thoughts. It starts in your mind. He says, only then, after you meditate on this word, you will succeed and prosper in everything. Everything that you do. You will be blessed. You will prosper. Any kind of business that you do. You, you know what? You won't even have to think hard what kind of business because it doesn't matter. Whatever you start, it will prosper. It will succeed. Whatever you do will succeed and it will prosper because your mind will be set on the Spirit. You will live to please Him. You will seek to honor Him in all that you do. And God is going to pour out His blessing and God's going to prosper you. And you're going to have an abundance to bless the kingdom of God and to give and to live a life of joy and peace. We are not to be in poverty. That is a curse mentality. We are to be rich, to do every good work. But see, a lot of us can't be rich because our mind is not set on the Lord. And so the moment we get a couple extra dollars, we lose track of ourselves. We lose control of ourselves. We are not faithful stewards of what God's given us. But if we meditate on the Word of God, if we allow God to, be, to submerge our mind and our thought life, we will succeed and prosper in everything that we do. I want us to stand. We're going to pray. Isaiah 26.3. It says... You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. You will, per, you will keep him in perfect peace. You will protect him. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. whose mind is stayed on you. Just take a moment right now and I want you to just fix your thoughts on Him. Th fix your eyes on Him. Just fix your mind on Him. Begin to meditate on who God is and what He has done. Come on, take, take some time and just love the Lord with your mind. Love the Lord in that secret place, in the area of your thoughts. Just fix your thoughts upon Him. Let Him become more real. Let Him catch your attention. Let Him catch your life. That you won't be distracted by the things that surround you. Come on, let's take some time and worship right now. And as we worship, just, just begin to just set your mind on the things of God. Set your mind on Him. And He will keep you in perfect peace. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you have sent your Holy Spirit to renew our thoughts. We thank you, Lord, that we have received the mind of Christ. We thank you, Lord, for your word that is true, that is powerful, and that is able to transform our life. We thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's worship. And I I'm desperate for you And I I'm lost without you Oh
I just want to welcome every person that wants prayer for anything in, in any area of your life. If you just want somebody to stand with you, encourage you to pray for you, or you want to surrender your life to the Lord, or maybe you've been battling in this area of your thoughts, in this area of your mind, and you just want to receive prayer. Right now as we worship, I want to encourage you to just come so we can stand as a body and just stand for one another in prayer. And God's going to do something supernatural, even today, even right now. And if you just want to surrender your life to the Lord, maybe surrender your thought life to the Lord and just fix your eyes upon Him and you want to come out and make that statement. I want to welcome you. I want to welcome you to do that because the Holy Spirit is doing something here right now. So as we worship and as we close, just come forward. If you want prayer, if you want somebody to minister to you, speak the word of life over you, just come forward. is the air I breathe, oh, your holy presence living in me. Say you are my daily bread, you are my daily bread. We pray for the renewing of the mind over the whole congregation and over every person that is here. Renewing of the mind. We pray, God, for a transformation to take place. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would renew our thoughts and our attitudes. And this morning, we set our mind on the things of the Spirit. We set our thoughts on the realities of heaven. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, and I speak life. I speak peace over every person in this room. I come against the spirit of fear. I come against the spirit of anxiety. In Jesus' name, I speak life. I speak peace. 
I pray God that the way we see things will be, will change in Jesus name in Jesus name thank you Holy Spirit for what you are doing thank you Holy Spirit that you are touching our life that you are transforming our life hallelujah and I want us to pray in closing for uh, for Mike Markin and his family his beautiful son Georgie let's welcome him real quick Mike And they want to dedicate their child to the Lord and what a precious baby and I know that there's been this is this is a miracle baby amen and there's just been so much attack against his life and we we kept in prayer and, and praise God it, the baby's healthy everything's good and uh, God has a big plan for for, for his life and uh, I don't know if you want to say anything not really <laughs> amen Let's just stretch our hands and pray for this child, Lord. We thank you for Georgie. We thank you, God, for this precious gift and this precious life. Lord, we pray that your will will prosper, God. We know that you saw every day of his life before uh, he was even formed in the womb. And we pray, God, that he will discover and complete his potential and his God-given purpose for this life. That you would discover, God, your plan. Lord, we dedicate him to you. Lord, that he will encounter your love, that he will encounter your presence at an early age, that he will be a remnant. God, somebody who is living for you, we dedicate, we surrender his life to you. Lord, we bless the parents. We pray for wisdom on how to instruct and raise and teach. We bless their marriage. Lord, we pray that you would bring them even closer together through this life that you have given them. Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Be blessed, guys. Love this child. Is there any announcements, Rod? Or are we good? We're good? Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Happy 4th of July again. Please maybe invite somebody over and let's continue to celebrate. We'll see you guys next week. And we do have prayer week starting from Monday through Friday every evening at 7 prayer week so if you want to join in on prayer the church will be in prayer this whole week so any evening at 7 p.m you can just come on in and uh, be part of what god is doing amen